Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to the Rise of the Tomb Kings for Total War Warhammer 2. I was lucky enough to get invited up to an event by Creative Assembly where I got hands on with the Tomb Kings campaign. I think I played them for around about two to three hours, so I kind of got a good early grasp of them. However, I haven't made it into the medium or late game. And this video basically is going to be my impressions and my thoughts of their mechanics and their units and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the campaign and basically just play it like a let's play of me talking about all their mechanics and stuff. But I do only have 10 minutes to show you. So because of that, I'm going to be cutting bits out which I don't think are very important so hopefully you guys get the most amount of information in this game so you can kind of make your own decision whether you think Rise of the Tomb Kings is going to be worth it for you. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the came, a campaign as Cetra because he is an absolute badass. I love Cetra so much and we'll go ahead and get started with the Tomb King mechanics. The books shall be mine and so will the pyramid for I am Cetra the Imperishable I do not serve, I rule. I do not serve, I rule. I love fucking Century, such a beast. So we'll go ahead and jump into it and I'll try and run through all the important uh, mechanics and kind of the key information you need to know about the Tomb Kings. Now granted I only played this for two hours so there might be some stuff I missed so make sure to check out all the other YouTubers opinions on the uh, Tomb Kings as well. So one of the things you can kind of tell straight away and this is the Eye of the Vortex campaign is we are not chasing after the Vortex. We are looking to unlock the powers of the Black Pyramid of Nagash by obtaining these books and these books are scattered all around the new world and in Ulf 1 so we're going to have to go ahead and kind of just you know go and secure these uh, provinces right down here where the books are garrisoned and they will go ahead and give us some nice interesting buffs so for example if I was to come down here and take out this province which I believe is held by the greenskins down here I'm going to go ahead for a reward and kind of you know obtain these buffs as well as you know obtaining some other real real good faction wide bonus is, which can be really useful so you can kind of almost pick and choose what you want to have um, and what books you want to go to because you do only have to collect five however there are plenty more than five around the campaign map so that's kind of your goal to unlock the powers of Nagash at, at the Black Pyramid obviously being such a powerful powerful monument you can also see the elite garrison there as well uh, you can see the numbers of the elite garrison as well as that, Cetra goes ahead and benefits from this cult. And this is a really, really interesting mechanic solo for the Tomb Kings, is you can go ahead and craft items. So basically, you use these uh, these jars, which you collect from winning battles and doing quests, much like you would the warp stone in the normal Eye of the Vortex campaign. And you can use that along with money to awaken bonuses for your armies as well as special regiments of renown which you can go ahead and bring up and these guys are i think more common because they're, they're a little bit different to regiments of renown they're kind of more like the special summoned uh things for like the lizard men almost like blessed units kind of but separate to the tomb kings and you can go ahead and spend these jars and resources to go ahead and obtain these guys and bring them into your army so you can do elite units you can go ahead and craft weapons and armor as well as enchanted items talismans and obviously magical stuff so you can actually really work towards you know maybe thinking oh i need to obtain some wood and also some of this um, obsidian so i can go ahead and craft this really good uh, scepter and I, I love the way that this dlc goes ahead and gives you more options to go instead of just going oh i need to rush for the book of the gashes there's lots of other stuff to do and that's what i think is really really fun about the tomb kings is you don't just have to go after these book of books of the gash where you can do that but there's plenty of other stuff to do along the way which i think i really really dig about the Tomb Kings. As well as that, their units do not cost anything. Obviously, as the Tomb Kings lore, they go ahead and bring back wanting souls into the world to inhabit their skeleton warriors. And that's basically shown by not having any upkeep. They do, however, have a unit limit or unit capacity. So they can only have so many of a certain unit in each army. That means you're not going to be having you know, a full stack of the elite war sphinxes or an entire stack of skeleton chariots. You can probably unlock them through upgrading in your commander and doing other stuff like that as well as that the tech tree for the tomb kings is very very different to everyone else 
instead of just having a normal tech tree laid out and you kind of go through it like a tree you go ahead and have these wisdoms of the second dynasty first dynasty and so on so you kind of have to pick a way at what dynasty you want to go down because once you do one dynasty you go ahead and take a pretty big research rate debuff meaning it's going to take longer for you to research the other ones so you kind of have to pick what ones you want to have immediately and what ones you want to kind of take on later on and you don't really mind kind of neglecting until end game you also go ahead and once you've re researched this huge kind of tech which does take you 14 turns you can then almost immediately get all the other techs i think they take you like a turn or two and you just end up paying a little bit of gold or spending your uh, jars you obtain through battles to go ahead and get these instant buffs to your empire so it's kind of like a, a long wait you know you wait 14 turns and you immediately get this big big buff over the next couple turns which will then enhance your empire you can also unlock these really, really cool Tomb King Lords from each of the dynasties, which again, all have their different uh, traits. So once you do, say, for example, take the Wisdom of the First Dynasty, you can go ahead and obtain this Lord who will go ahead and have his own Lord traits and it'll be different for each one. So again, you know, if you're looking for powerful commanders from the previous, you know, dynasties of the Tomb Kings, you can go ahead and obtain their special Lord. And I imagine that it'll be represented a bit more over here. You also obviously obtain more Lich Priests. There's like loads of different Lords there which you can go ahead and pick up, as well as just getting normal buffs for your units and, uh, you know, really advancing them to be extremely powerful. We also have these techs at the end as well, where you can kind of get these special followers to your side, uh, getting, you know, different you know, regiments of renown and, and stuff like that, um, as well as just bonuses to your lords as well. So again, I really like this extra currency of these jars, which, you know, go ahead and just give you like a immediate buff to your empire, which you can go ahead and use. Tomb Kings. Oh yeah, we'll also look at the rights as well so the rights for the tomb kings you go ahead and obtain a casket of souls you guys know or if you guys know anything about the tomb kings this is an extremely powerful magical item you can see the missile damage being 860 which is pretty crazy indeed uh, you can also go ahead and get some uh, mages as well as this is a really nice right as well you can go ahead and cause sandstorms in your empire causing enemies to take sandstorm attrition if they're out in the open so if you're getting invaded by several different factions you can go ahead and pop this right and they'll start taking attrition from the sandstorms which i think is really really cool you also get this sand vial as well which goes ahead and gives you some nice little bonuses um, as well as giving you some other additional kind of more empire building mechanics in the last the one campaign and the nice thing is with the tomb kings is you can immediately jump up to this 20 sack size army now it's not going to be elite units or anything like that but because they have no upkeep we can go ahead and obtain a pretty you know sizable army straight away at the beginning of the game hitting our unit caps for our skeleton chariots and we do have a mission to go ahead and take out this uh, salt plain or province up here which will go ahead and give us some of our nice jars so we can maybe kick off our crafting as well as giving us a nice bit amount of money okay also, guys so we are now in the battle our forces are ready to beat back the enemy green skins and show them that this is our land so the forces of the tomb kings have a really interesting ability in battle kind of a bit like the murder's prowess of the dark elves they have this thing called realm of souls and basically as they lose soldiers they're going to go ahead and hit these thresholds and each threshold they go ahead and obtain a nice little buff so kind of you kill the tomb king they hit the threshold and then they kind of regenerate you can see at tier one when i lose a set amount of units we'll go ahead and obtain replenishment points for all units and units will start to get healed then at you know the second tier we'll get an improvement to that and then the third tier will go ahead and get an, a greater improvement so team kings i feel like kind of play like you take them down you do damage to them however they don't stop coming you know they rise again they you know they keep on coming up from the dead keep on attacking relentlessly and then at the final tier you go ahead and get this nice little augment which spawns a unit of elite asabi uh, ashabi ashabi tea, however you pronounce that you basically get a really really elite unit that comes onto the field of battle and uh, you know it helps you out so if you do end up getting pushed back to that really really low tier of not having many men left okay time for another setra explosion let's go ahead and send these greenskins flying we also have our wall sphinx diving into battle just collapsing these orcs on top of each other okay guys so that is going to be the first little glimpse at the tomb kings hopefully i gave you guys some good information about all the new mechanics and units in the tomb king campaign obviously this is still very very early on in the campaign itself so there's still lots more to discover as you do push through and kind of complete the quests of the, uh, of the books of the gash and i'm sure they're going to have some 
some really, really interesting mechanics. I also am super curious to see how the Tomb Kings finish up in the final battle, obviously in the Eye of the Vortex campaign. And I think Creative Assembly are trying to hide back a little bit so that you no one finds out and no one has it spoiled to them. So I'm really looking forward to finding out myself. If you are interested in watching more of my stuff on the Tomb Kings, make sure to subscribe on my channel. As soon as I get the go-ahead from Creative Assembly, I'll be uploading more campaigns and battles with them, as well as taking the Tomb Kings into the laboratory to see what some of their units can do. So make sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time, and fish out.